Mr. Krabs, are you okay? I heard a wow! A pie! It's from Squidward. To SpongeBob. Well, here you go. Hello everyone, this is Sorry and Target welcoming you back to the next entry in our Retro Carnivores review series, where today we are going to be looking at perhaps the most disappointing entries in the Carnivores franchise. The reboot and rebirth of the series that promised so much, but gave so little. The gorgeously shallow next generation reboots, Carnivores Dinosaur Hunter HD and Reborn. Now, I've lumped these two together in this review for fairly obvious reasons. I mean, they're basically the same game on different platforms. But before writing this review, I did go back and play each one individually. Carnivores HD on the PS3 and Carnivores Reborn on PC. And guys, I gotta say, Carnivores HD is hands down the superior game in my opinion. Remember, this is all my opinion. I am not the final authority on carnivores. We remember this, right? Yeah! But I'll let you guys decide which one you think is better at the end of this review. So without further ado, let's begin. From an official content standpoint, the Carnivores franchise was in an odd place in 2013. The fairly recent mobile ports continued to chug along with occasional updates, but never felt as though they were being driven with any purpose, toward any goal. Then, on September 3rd, 2013, Tatum Games and Voxter Entertainment suddenly and unexpectedly unveiled the second generation of Carnivores games, Carnivores Dinosaur Hunter HD, a next-gen, high-definition reboot of the franchise exclusively for the PlayStation 3 console. Carnivores HD's announcement trailer dropped without warning, and only one week later on September 10th, the game was released on the PlayStation Store. Initial excitement for Carnivores HD was enormous, but once it actually released, the game received mixed to negative reviews from both critics and fans, with many criticizing the lack of content, watered down feel, and disloyal release on PS3 consoles instead of PC, where Carnivores originated, thrived, and is, you know, what most of the fan base owned. Despite developer talk of update patches and DLC, by the time 2014 arrived, Carnivores HD had faded into irrelevance. A lone Christmas-themed image was the last anyone heard of Voxter's involvement with Carnivores, and soon after, the game was all but forgotten, and focus slowly shifted back to the mobile ports. Then, in the middle of Tatum's infamous dinosaur drawing contest, the company announced a collaboration with Digital Dreams Entertainment to port Carnivores HD over to PC and give fans the game we wanted from the beginning. And so, on September 2nd, 2014, Carnivores Dinosaur Hunter Reborn began its Kickstarter campaign, ambitiously aiming for $25,000 to add a ton of new features, as well as some stretch goals that even at the time, were kinda ridiculous. Unfortunately, Carnivores Reborn's Kickstarter failed hard, barely earning a fifth of its immediate goal. Despite this setback, the game released on Steam on May 27, 2015, and, at first, received near-universal praise. The hype and energy surrounding Carnivores Reborn's release was high, the devs set up a community forum, there was constant interaction, talk of continuous updates and DLC, and even full-blown Steam Workshop support later on. However, with as much mystery and abruptness as it appeared, Carnivores Reborn went eerily silent, as did Carnivores as a whole for well over a year. 
The hype surrounding the release of Carnivore's HD was huge. And when that first trailer dropped back in September of 2013, I lost my freaking mind. I mean, can we talk about how phenomenal that first trailer is? Like Jiminy Christmas, that is hands down one of the best put together game trailers I have ever seen. It's what my mod review trailers all strive to be. It starts off slow and subtle with an introduction to Planet FMMUV32, then builds as it showcases the world, the dinosaurs, and the gameplay, all as the triumphant music swells until the T-Rex is revealed with a mighty roar, and then slows right back down, gently stepping away from the planet, almost to say, and now it's your turn. This trailer perfectly captures the grandeur of the world and the dinosaurs, and it has such class. The weapons and equipment are there to remind you this is a hunting game, but it never fires a shot. Everything escalates around the majesty of the dinosaurs, never defiling itself with the grisly details of actually pulling the trigger. And the whole thing is continuously elevated by Matthias Benz's beautiful track from Ashes, rising and falling as the trailer calls for it. This trailer is a masterpiece. Every time I watch it, even today, I get chills. It is so good. And if you haven't seen this trailer yet, there is a link to it in the description. I cannot recommend it enough. Contrast this craftsmanship with the effort put into the Reborn trailer, which amounted to just taking the original HD trailer and literally swapping the logos at the end. That's it. Carnivore's HD even had this neat little marketing campaign with short gameplay videos that showed off the game's mechanics with tips and tricks, and Reborn did the exact same thing to those videos. And sure, you can argue, well, sorry, and it's the same game just ported over to another platform. Of course they can reuse the videos. Yeah, they can. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. But for those of us who have already seen these videos and played HD, where's the incentive to invest in this new and improved version if all we're being shown is recycled footage? It's cheap, it's lazy, and it pretty well sums up the entirety of Carnivore's Reborn's production. The only really new trailer we got for Carnivore's Reborn was the launch trailer, which is just the HD launch trailer spliced together with bits of brand new footage. And it's disgusting. The entire trailer is just shooting dinosaurs. And it's awful. It still has Matthias Benz's beautiful score trying to keep the majesty of the HD trailer while the footage is busy going bang, bang, bang. And if that wasn't bad enough, the HUD and equipment pop-ups are all shown on screen, like the X-ray visor and the button prompts and the score counter, and it just looks so unprofessional. Even the new scenic shots are awkwardly sped up and randomly cut and just completely unfocused. Like, what's this random Parasaurolophus butt doing here? Either focus on the environment or the dinosaur, not parts of both. All the dignity and splendor of the HD trailer is completely lost in this Frankenstein disaster. And that nicely exemplifies the quality of Reborn as a whole. However, one interesting bit of marketing Carnivore's Reborn tried were promotional videos featuring the creators of the original Carnivore's games, programmer Artem Kurevchenko and art designer Yaroslav Kurevchenko. And I really enjoyed these promotional videos. Not only did they give us faces and voices to the people who helped create the original trilogy of games that we fell in love with, but they added a really cool behind the scenes almost making of documentary perspective to the game. I thought it was so cool to finally see Artem and Yaroslav as people, not just names. And I thought it was just a perfectly poetic touch that they were the ones coming back to return carnivores to glory. Of course, it's interesting going back and rewatching them now, hearing what Artem and Yaroslav had to say, 
and it just makes me wonder how involved they really were with Reborn, or if they were just brought back for credibility. I mean, given how Reborn eventually turned out, I just find it strange that all this dedication to the brand would suddenly die out without a word. I mean, they're obviously reading from a script, but they're speaking like this is their dream project, their baby, their triumphant return to help the franchise that helped make them successful. And then the project dies and we just never hear from them again. I don't know guys, it's fascinating and strange. And if you haven't seen these promotional videos and want to check them out, there are links to them in the description. The Carnivore's games have never been about music. In fact, it can be argued that the only Carnivore's games that actively use music in some form are the weakest entries in the franchise. But the reboots made music a substantial part of either their marketing or the actual game with each one using music in different situations to varying effectiveness. Not counting the trailer track from Ashes, Carnivore's HD featured only two tracks. Firstly, its main menu theme. The HD menu theme is super simple. A subtle drum beat flavored with soft trumpet swells and low bass notes, all backdropped by creepy noises and animal calls. I personally, love this menu theme, and I don't think it gets enough credit for just how carnivores it sounds. It kind of feels like the Ice Age theme, weird and scary, just focused on dinosaurs instead of polar environments. Other than the simple yet satisfying menu theme, HD features the phenomenal trophy room theme, but you guys might recognize it as the outro music in all of my videos. And holy crap, is this theme good. It's upbeat, it's catchy, it's alien, and just feels so carnivores. That's what I love about the music from the HD era. There's not a lot of it, only three tracks, but they're all so high quality and all work so well together. From the awe and majesty of the trailer, to the jungle-themed anxiety of the main menu, to the swell of victory in the trophy room. They're a perfect chronicling of what Carnivores is all about, and I love them. Contrast that with Carnivores Reborn's full-blown soundtrack composed by Rich Douglas. The Carnivores Reborn soundtrack, primarily the main overture, is grand and triumphant, with a fast, upbeat theme blended with dinosaur roars. It's fun, like some old school dinosaur adventure, and I really enjoy it. The soundtrack even features more ominous pieces about hunting your prey, being chased by a carnivore, or even getting eaten. It's a really fun and well put together soundtrack, but sometimes I feel that it's a bit unnecessary. And unfortunately, it pops up in game as menu cues depending on the situation. For instance, if a carnivore is nearby, the appropriate track from the soundtrack will play, or if you're out of ammunition, the corresponding track will play there as well. It's kinda jarring, completely ruins the immersion in my opinion, and is just distracting. Like I can't focus on listening to the environment with these suspenseful music cues popping up every time a dinosaur breathes. That said, I really do like the Reborn soundtrack. I don't like it as much as the HD music tracks, and for how big and epic it is, it almost feels kinda wasted on Reborn as a whole, but I still think it's a lively, unique, and rare addition to the Carnivore's legacy. But thank goodness Reborn kept the trophy theme. Don't you mess with my trophy theme, I will fight you. Carnivores HD and Reborn both feature nine levels, but technically only three different maps, with each level featuring alternate weather conditions and times of day to compensate for a lack of quantity. Now, let's just get this out of the way. For the size of the development team and budget, no, even taking those out of consideration, the maps in the Carnivores reboots are gorgeous. Beautifully, wonderfully lifelike. These maps just 
ooze with the richness and wonder of a pristine alien planet, mysteriously resembling our own. I mean, the fog maps are meh, but the day and especially dusk maps are jaw-dropping. From hot jungle beaches to misty mountain forests to dry open deserts, the environments are stunning and completely captivating with immersive sound effects and brilliant skyboxes. And just like multiplayer first-person shooter maps are designed to allow the best flow of gameplay, the Carnivore's reboot maps are designed in a very naturalistic way, which allows the dinosaurs to behave as real animals would. Thick, wooded areas provide shade for sleeping, eating, and hiding, narrow choke points double as migratory passageways, and wide open deserts or exposed watering holes provide hunters with a plethora of opportunities to test their hunting tactics. And while these maps really shine from an aesthetics and gameplay functionality standpoint, they're pretty disappointing from both a lore and world building standpoint. Firstly, Carnivore's HD should never have split each map into a different area based on the weather and time of day. That's cheap. So you've only got three maps. That's fine. Own it. Don't pretend you've got nine to boost numbers. Give us the three base maps, then either allow us to choose different times of day to hunt on, or give each map a day-night weather cycle. But don't act like it's some big reward to hunt the first map again with just a different lighting effect. And while I do like the idea of being able to hunt different dinosaurs depending on different times of day or location, I think that works best if dinosaurs are more or less common depending on the location and time of day. When your dinosaur roster is this small, completely removing them from a map really shackles gameplay options. It feels so forced and unnecessary like you have to play this map you otherwise wouldn't play because a certain dinosaur is available only on this map. Carnivore's Reborn promised to get rid of this feature and let you hunt any dinosaur anywhere you wanted to, but that obviously didn't happen. The Great Forest at Dusk is my favorite map in the reboots, hands down, and I want so badly to hunt a T-Rex there, but I can't because for some reason, the game just said no. I would even be fine with this mechanic if it was just for unlocking maps and dinosaurs the first time through, to build up to that grand cinematic reveal of the T-Rex on Basmashi Rocks at dusk, then letting players go back on earlier maps to hunt dinosaurs they've already unlocked, like the T-Rex in the Great Forest at dusk. But instead, you're just kind of stuck hunting what the game tells you where and when, and that just feels too restrictive for me. Plus, there's the reboot's complete abandonment of Carnivore's signature, subtle storytelling in the map design. What makes the Carnivore's games, the first one especially, so unique is its balanced blend of hunting simulation and mythic world building. The game is a hunting simulator, that's what Carnivores is at its core and should always be first and foremost. And while the original games pull that off well, they're also very basic in that regard. They're not as in-depth as, say, the older Cabela's entries like Outdoor Adventures 2005, which is one of the deepest hunting simulator titles ever, in my opinion. I hear The Hunter is pretty in-depth too, but I haven't played that one, so I can't really compare it. So to compensate for its lack of hunting depth, Carnivores wraps itself in this mysterious backstory that enhances the hunting mechanics and gives it that mythical feel to keep players invested. Carnivores HD matches the originals in terms of hunting simulation depth, which is admittedly pretty basic but it also does away with the subtle story elements, which leaves it essentially with the worst of both worlds. If it's going to abandon the story, then it needs to hammer home on the depth expected from the greatest hunting sim titles, but it does neither and kinda strands itself with no story or depth to keep players returning. And we gotta talk about the crappy fan service. Look, I get it, it's a reboot. And in reboots, things can change drastically. 
But when your new maps don't look anything like the maps they were named after, what's the point of giving them those names? Delphius Hills was a hilly, temperate forest, not a flat, tropical jungle. I mean, the Great Forest is a better Delphius Hills than Delphius Hills. This should have been Mania Jungle, this should have been Delphius Hills, and this, look, I don't know what this could have been, but come on. Basmashi Rocks? Rocks? Was that the deciding factor? That's one of the laziest swipes at an homage I've ever seen. Things I know. Ultimately, the maps in the Carnivores reboots are pretty and functional, but that's all I can really say about them. I mean, they work from a hunting aspect, which is what should be the forefront in Carnivores. But even then, they just barely scrape by. And I'm not saying add forts and temples and pyramids and easter eggs in every square inch of the map to the point where it ruins the hunting, but if your hunting system is this shallow, you need something more. That's where Carnivores 1 got it right, and Carnivores HD got it wrong. Like the reboot maps, the maps in Carnivores 2 are pretty bland, but Carnivores 2 at least compensates by having more maps, more dinosaurs, and more weapons. Even with just the three maps, the reboots could have told a small story that could have been left open for future expansion with DLC. Nothing grand, just subtle little hints that add to the mystery of the world. Something that gets people wondering and asking questions. Because that's what makes Carnivores fun. The dinosaurs and the hunting, yes, but also the mystery. It's what's kept Carnivores alive for two decades. It's what's fueled the greatest mods ever made for the series, and it's what the reboots simply did not have enough of. The Carnivores reboots feature six huntable dinosaurs and three ambient animals, for a total of nine creatures populating the world. This low number really unfortunately emphasizes that this is a remake of Carnivores 1, specifically which itself only featured seven animals, and only three of which were actually carnivores. However, the carnivores reboots actually went for quality over quantity with their dinosaurs. I know, I know, just hear me out. I've said this before, and it's not always a popular opinion, but hey, it's just my opinion, so here we go. Of the three big dinosaur games that came out around that 2013 to 2015 time frame, The Hunter Primal, Carnivores HD, and Ark, I, personally, still think Carnivores HD, hands down, has the best looking dinosaurs. While I do disagree with the reboot's complete abandonment of the classic Burian canon style, like Cityscape's dinosaurs, I do appreciate that HD at least had the guts to pick a style and commit to it. Tons of other dinosaur games, including both the Hunter Primal and Ark, go for this weird, half Jurassic Park movie monster, half scientifically accurate blend with the dinosaur designs, and every time, to me, it just turns out kind of awful. You've got T-Rexes with these gnarly crocodile-like jaws and weird little feathery crests, or you've got Utah Raptors taking front and center because we can't call them Velociraptors or that'll upset the Paleo fans. And we've got to give them feathers because dinosaurs had feathers. But then it's just feathers on the head and the arms and the hands are still pronated and it's like, who, who are you trying to please here? The people who want Jurassic Park aren't getting anything out of this. And the people who want scientifically accurate dinosaurs aren't getting anything out of this. Just pick a style. You're gonna get some serious splinters in your butt riding the fence like that. And I'm not trying to downplay or discredit anybody who likes or enjoys those styles. I mean, I think we know which of those three games won the popularity contest. If you like that half Jurassic Park, half scientifically accurate, um, Juracurate style, then that is awesome. You keep on enjoying it. I'm just saying, for me personally, they're pretty clashing, visually unappealing, and just don't work. Luckily, Carnivore's HD chose a side, leaning more toward a mid-90s, early 2000s pop culture Jurassic Park style, and I think it turned out beautifully. The dinosaur models are wonderfully, gorgeously crafted. 
tons of excellent detail brings each model to life, and the animations and behaviors enhance them to some of the best all-around dinosaurs I've ever seen in a video game. I mean, in my opinion, the aisles are the best, but come on, these are pretty good too, right? The way their muscles and skin flex and stretch with each movement, how they eat and drink and sleep and flee from predators and just act alive. They feel alive, and that's one of the greatest hurdles in dinosaur games today that, in my opinion, so few games have cleared. The awe and majesty of dinosaurs is truly exemplified with the reboot dinosaurs. Burian inspired or not, they feel so real, so lifelike, and just add to the immersion that carnivores is so well known for. You get the sense that you're hunting a living, breathing animal, not a video game model going through its robotic animations. I honestly hate showing these dinosaurs off with footage from my old potato PC that barely runs Reborn because my choppy footage just does not do them justice. Gorgeously detailed models, fluid animations, I am still just so impressed with these wonderful dinosaurs and am so proud that Carnivores got to claim them as its own. Now, as great as these dinosaurs are, in my opinion, they're not perfect. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't like that they're not based in the canon's Denyuk Burian style, even though they do commit to their own, somewhat generic, style excellently. But how cool would it have been to see old school retrosaurs brought to life with high quality, ultra detailed models and fluid lifelike animations? Like, I honestly can't think of any dinosaur game that features dinosaurs in that style. Again, it feels like everyone's trying to do Jurassic Park with feathers. And seeing the Carnivores reboots homage their legacy with high quality, Burian inspired dinosaurs would have made these games so, so, so much more unique compared to the slew of other dinosaur games that came out around the same time. The dinosaurs' pathfinding is also pretty atrocious. In Carnivores HD, dinosaurs were often criticized for having an ice skating effect like they just slid across the ground while running, and for constantly getting stuck on the terrain. I mean, nothing ruins the fear, immersion, and exhilaration of a T-Rex hunt, like watching the thing get stuck on a rock and start jogging in place. So, the Reborn dev team set out to fix the pathfinding issues and make the dinosaur's behavior even more realistic. And somehow, they made it even worse. Now, if a dinosaur is shot or startled, it has to turn all the way around before it starts running. Which is ludicrous! In the original games, heck, even in Carnivore's HD, dinosaurs start running first, then figure out the direction, as real animals do. If a lion ambushes a zebra, the zebra isn't going to trot around in place to face the other direction before it takes off. It's going to bolt and maneuver itself where it needs to go while running. What's worse is that the dinosaurs seem to be missing animation frames in their dramatic turns. So they just spin frozen in place like display statues on a rotating table or something. Which not only ruins immersion further, but gives hunters way too many easy shots at them. The sound design in the reboots is not phenomenal. Sometimes it really shines, and sometimes it falls flat on its face. But overall, it's decent. The game still incorporates the classic Carnivore's 3D sound hunting mechanic, allowing you to hear where your prey is in the environment and respond appropriately, even though reborn soundtrack cues make hunting by sound a lot harder than it already is. The sounds for the maps and weapons all function well, sounding appropriately natural and powerful, respectively. Some of the weapons might sound a little underpowered for hunting gigantic alien reptiles, but that ultimately comes down to personal preference. It's the dinosaurs, however, whose sounds are pretty hit or miss. The Triceratops and Parasaurolophus sound the best, in my opinion. The other four dinosaurs sound pretty rough. Be it stock bear sounds, generic monster roars, unedited lion roars, or yawning vacuum cleaners, 
It feels like very little effort was put into the sounds of the animals. And the Carnivore series often uses stock sound effects well, but even then, they sound appropriately unique and reptilian and alien. In the reboots, it's hard not to say, oh, that's a bear, that's a lion, that's a stock monster. The Rex did get a better roar in Reborn, but despite the devs literally promising no more bears on the Kickstarter page, the other dinosaurs weren't so lucky. One fairly controversial sound design choice in the reboots is the absence of ambient dinosaur noises. The original carnivores maps were brought to life through a combination of clever map design, naturalistic ambient sounds, and ominous dinosaur roars echoing in the background. Carnivores HD and Reborn do not feature these ambient roars, exclusively limiting the maps to the sounds of rustling leaves, running water, and howling wind. Some people do not like this choice, and understandably so, but I actually think it's a pretty smart feature. Veterans of the old games, or even savvy new players, recognize that those ambient roars are just that, ambient roars, not actual animals that can hunt you on the map. But without those ambient roars, every footstep, every growl, every distant roar you hear is an actual animal spawned in on the map that can hunt and kill you. That's something that I personally think really ups the immersion and fear factor in hunting. It's one thing to be hunting, hear an ambient roar, and dismiss it as just a cool background noise. It's another to hear that roar, and know that's an actual dinosaur somewhere in the jungle. The Carnivore's reboots only feature four weapons. A basic rifle, crossbow, revolver, and sniper rifle. And again, this makes them feel very much like a literal reboot of the first Carnivore, specifically which itself only featured three weapons. And just like Carnivores 1, the reboot weapon roster covers all the basics. Of course, it would have been nice to get some additional variants like compound bows, semi-auto rifles, and shotguns of all types, but those are really just the icing. This is the cake, and the cake is good. The gunplay in the reboots is, honestly, near perfect, brilliantly retaining that classic carnivore's feel while still being modern and up to date. In the original games, you pulled out your weapon and plastered that thing right up to your face until you had to reload or ran out of ammo. It was a very tense feeling, like your hunter is so terrified of the world he's in that he's perpetually aimed down the iron sights and ready to fire at the next twig snap which I really do like in a weird, dark humor sort of way, but it did make the gunplay feel very stiff and limited. In the reboots, your range of action with weapons is much more fluid. You keep your weapon at the hip by default, and thank goodness the devs did not include a floating reticle. Nothing ruins immersion in hunting games like a giant floating crosshair magically telling you exactly where to shoot. Either blind fire or use the iron sights, and that is exactly what Carnivore's HD and Reborn give you. In addition to finally being able to hip fire your weapon, you can sprint with it, reload it at any point in a clip, hold your breath to steady your aim just like in real life, tons of additional gunplay mechanics to make each hunt feel more authentic, unique, and intense. Honestly, the weapons and gunplay are excellent in the reboots. You can argue there's not enough variety in the individual firearms, and since these games didn't double down on the in-depth hunting mechanics like they probably should have, that is a valid complaint. But honestly, the basics are covered and everything feels so smooth. With the locations and dinosaurs, there are obvious positives and negatives, but with the weapons, the negative really isn't that strong. In fact, the weapons and gunplay in the reboots may be the strongest element in the games. The weapons themselves are well designed with balanced pros and cons and cool little design choices, and 
coupled with mortal zones on the dinosaurs, allow for a realistic and fun experience that lets the player take control of the situation. Carnivores HD and Reborn are also filled with extra details and unique lore choices that I really appreciate, but sometimes I feel don't get enough recognition. The shooting gallery is a fantastic way to get familiar with your weapons, instead of just hoping you know how to use it when a Ceratosaurus is bearing down on you at top speed. It feels like something Dino Hunt Corp would actually set up for clients to test out their weapons. Prominently displayed in the sky is a distant gas giant that is really dumb, but I actually kind of dig as a lore choice. When dinosaur games take place on alien planets, like in the Hunter Primal or Carnivores, it's usually not explicitly stated in the game, and I can't tell you how many playthroughs I've seen where people keep viewing the games through an Earth context. Adding something not seen on Earth, constantly visible in the sky, is a great world building element that does harken back to that subtle storytelling through map design that Carnivores is known for, and gets people asking where, not when, the games take place. The hunting and gathering mechanics have also significantly improved in the reboots. Carnivores HD introduced the mechanic where hunters have to actually go up to their kills and claim them for the trophy room only if they want to, which is a great feature. Carnivores Reborn then ups the ante by forcing hunters to rendezvous with the retriever bot to evacuate if they want to keep their trophies and score from a hunt. It's little gameplay additions like this that make hunts more challenging, more rewarding, and more believable. The decision to change the trophy room was met with some controversy at first, but for what HD and Reborn are, I personally feel it was a necessary choice. In the original Carnivores, you could keep 24 trophies in the gallery, with the room filling up in sequential order, and the last trophy always being replaced if you killed any more animals. In the reboots, you can only display 17 trophies, but you can actually store up to 120 trophies in the gallery's memory banks, allowing you to rearrange and customize the entire gallery to your liking. This is a phenomenal mechanic that I would love to see utilized, not just in future Carnivores games, if we get any, but hunting games in general. It's everything that a virtual trophy room should be. I'm surprised it took this long for hunting games to figure this out, but I'm really glad Carnivores was the first. So what even separates HD from Reborn to begin with? Well, to start, HD plays things a lot safer than Reborn. A few notable Carnivores elements were reportedly scrapped in order for the game to keep its 12 plus rating and reach a wider audience. Those being the death animations, as well as losing trophies and points if killed by a dinosaur mid-hunt. These made the game very easy, and in essence, pointless. Like, if you still keep your points and trophies after being killed by a dinosaur, where's the urge to hunt skillfully, carefully, and actually work toward escaping? Luckily, Reborn fixed this issue and made hunters lose trophies and points if killed by a dinosaur, as well as added a couple of other details that helped the game feel a bit more rewarding. Structuring the first hunt like a tutorial, and forcing players to rendezvous with the retriever bot to escape, instead of just exiting the game from wherever they are. There are also some upgrades to give players more things to spend their points on, which is nice, but again feels kind of pointless after you've acquired about 20,000 gems. Another new element Reborn tried to introduce into Carnivore's lore is mutant dinosaurs, and the more I think about the concept of these mutated dinosaurs, the more I hate it. I've talked at length about these mutant dinosaurs before, so if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts about them specifically, I'll leave some links to some videos in the description, but long story short, they're just not mutant dinosaurs. They're cheap reskins with some slight model tweaks. That's it. They're not more aggressive, they're not tankier, they're not more rare. There's no actual effort to make them stand out as these rare, special mutant dinosaurs. In fact, in my DRM-free version of Carnivores that never got the one update, 
they're more common than the normal dinosaurs. But the one new feature Reborn brought back that was supposed to turn it into the carnivores game we wanted is the death animations. And man, what a disappointment they are. I remember the first death animation I saw in action in a live stream on the day Reborn launched was the Ceratosauruses. And when that Ceratosaurus leapfrogged in slow motion at the camera for the first time, I blindly, desperately told myself, Hey, that wasn't that bad. Well guys, four years later, let me just say, it not only was, it is that bad. The death animations in Carnivores Reborn are embarrassing. They're rushed, they're glitchy, and to be honest, I don't even think that they're finished. The models bend and stretch unrealistically, the sound effects are all generic and don't match up with the dinosaurs or what's actually happening. This one is just god awful. And for some reason, the dinosaur models shrink? Like, why? What is the deal? The one new thing, the one return from the originals that was supposed to help bring carnivores back to glory, and they couldn't even get it right. The reborn death animations are a disaster. I'd honestly rather have HD's awkward fade to black when killed by a dinosaur than ever have to suffer through this ever again. At least the fade to black was a painless mercy kill. This is torture. To me personally, guys, HD is leagues ahead of reborn. There's not much to HD, that is absolutely true. But what it has is still somewhat cohesive and still works. Carnivores Reborn is bugged out to the nth degree, everything is glitchy, and yeah, it features more stuff, but it's more stuff for the sake of having more stuff. None of it is good, and hardly any of it works. The broken trophy room system, the buggy dinosaurs, glitchy sounds, embarrassing death animations, dumb mutant dinosaur reskins, None of it feels earned. It all feels messy and unpolished, like extra ideas hurriedly stapled and glued onto Carnivore's HD without properly implementing or polishing them. The only good thing I can consider Reborn having over HD is that it's a PC game, as Carnivore's should be. But some people's versions of Reborn won't even work. Like, what's the point of having it on PC if we can't mod or even get the darn thing to play? At least HD still works. I can hop back on my PS3 and play HD just as smoothly as I did six years ago. The Carnivore's reboots are a mess. Reborn so much more so than HD in my opinion. But despite their glaring flaws, like all of the Carnivore's games, I still have a lot of nostalgia for them. I still remember exactly where I was when the Carnivore's HD trailer dropped. I was at university, I had just gotten back from my last class of the day, I was tired, probably about to take a nap before dinner, and as I was scrolling through Facebook on my bed, I saw the Carnivore's Facebook page had just posted a link to a trailer for something called Carnivore's HD. Immediately, I was curious. I knew what I wanted it to be what I was hoping it would be, but there was no way it was going to be that, right? Boy, words cannot describe my excitement while watching that trailer. A brand new, shiny, updated Carnivores game in 2013. 2013! Six-year-old me playing Carnivores 2 for the first time in 2000 would never have believed this. I was watching it happen right in front of me, and I didn't believe it. A brand new, proper carnivores game for modern systems? This was a dream come true. And what luck that I actually already owned a PlayStation 3. Unfortunately, I didn't bring it with me to college, so I had to wait an agonizing two months until Thanksgiving break before I could go home and download it. Until then, I religiously kept up with Alien Dinosaur Hunters playthrough on YouTube, 
But man, once I got home, you bet your bottom dollar I had that thing downloading as soon as possible. By that point, I had already been exposed to the game's mixed reaction, the heavy criticisms, and the fandom's particular disdain for it, but I still had to try it out for myself. And when I finally got to load up Carnivore's HD on my own PS3, I kinda loved it. Sure, it had issues, but I'll be darned if I didn't enjoy the heck out of Carnivore's HD. Of course, I, like many others, was pretty underwhelmed when I finished the game, but I eagerly waited for DLC to drop. However, after that infamous Christmas-themed image went up, Carnivore's HD went dark. Until September of 2014, that is, when the Kickstarter for Carnivore's Reborn was announced, and I foolishly got myself excited again. Of course, like any blind fanboy, I backed the Kickstarter because I was going to own that box art and add it to my collection, darn it! There were worrying signs, like the reused promo videos, the insanely high Kickstarter goal, and the fact that we weren't ever really shown anything new, but I still held onto the hope that this would be the Carnivore's game of our dreams. And yeah, it launched with a rocky start and progress was slow, but there was still the Carnivore's Reborn community forum where we were in constant contact with the devs who were talking about DLC and patches and workshop support, and I kept telling myself, everything is going to be fine. Then, July of 2015 hit. Reborn got one patch for Steam users only, and then everything went dark. The devs didn't just stop posting updates, they straight up disappeared. Without a word. And man, I held on to hope for far too long after this game was already dead. I think it was about February of 2016 when I finally decided enough was enough, left those forums, and moved on to bigger and better things. Not long after that, I started my own little side project online, but hey, that's another story for another time. Guys, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a soft spot for the Carnivore's reboots. They're a mixed bag for a lot of people, myself included, full of ups and downs, pros and cons. They're such roller coasters. I mentioned in my Carnivore Cityscape review that Despite its lack of content, I would have been more accepting of Cityscape if what little content we got was high quality, polished, and generally well made. And man, Carnivore's HD is so close to being just that, that it almost hurts. There are times when I think back on the games and am just disgusted with the wasted potential and disappointments that they are. But then there are times when I go back and play them and immerse myself in the world and am just awestruck, and that bittersweet feeling becomes impossible to shake. The potential is there. It is so there. The groundwork is laid. It just wasn't given the attention it needed to become what we all wanted it to be. Well, there you go, guys. We have finally wrapped up our Retro Carnivores review series with the reboots, Carnivores HD and Reborn. And guys, I am so sorry this video took so long to come out. This was actually the review I started working on first when I thought of this retro review series way back when. But then, life gets busy, family stuff, job stuff, gathering footage, technology issues, fighting writer's block, organizing my thoughts to say everything I want to say without rambling on for two and a half hours. And I am also very sorry that this video is so long. I tried so hard to edit this review down to a more digestible length, and it still turned out way longer than I wanted. It's a very complicated process, which I guess nicely represents my complicated feelings toward these reboots. But I've finally given my shortened thoughts on the games, and now I want to hear yours. What do you think about Carnivore's HD and Reborn? Which one do you prefer? What's your favorite element from them? be it the music, maps, dinosaurs, whatever. Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. Also, I'm curious. If anyone is actually here who is also on the Carnivore's Reborn community forums, let me know who you are. 
I'd love to see if anybody from way back then found their way over here. Also, a huge thanks to my good friend JC Rev for providing like 95% of the footage for today's review. If you've seen basically any of my previous videos featuring Carnivores Reborn, you'll know that my old potato of a PC can barely run the thing above like 9 frames per second. It always looks like a stop motion animation, and I've always been frustrated with it. But JC, who has a much better PC than mine, volunteered to record and organize most of the Reborn footage for this video, and for that I am eternally grateful. Thanks to him, I finally have a Carnivore's Reborn video that looks professional, and you guys don't have to suffer through single digit frames. So be sure to go show him some love. I'll be sure to leave a link to his Twitter and YouTube channel in the description below. And guys, thanks as always for watching. We just hit 6,000 subscribers and that completely snuck up on me. I honestly wasn't even prepared or expecting it. And then someone in the comments said, I'm your 6,000th subscriber. And I was like, wait, really? Holy crap, you are. And it's just so cool, like 6,000 people. That's bigger than my hometown, guys. Freaking nuts. And as you guys know, this isn't even my job. It's just something I get to do for fun with all of you guys. And it's great, and I'm so grateful for you guys always sticking around and watching these videos. It really means a lot to me. I'm so glad I'm able to share my carnivores experiences with you guys, and I love hearing about yours. And as long as you guys keep watching this content, I will for sure keep making it. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out my Patreon account, you can also follow me on social media to stay up to date on all things carnivores, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more carnivores content. Thanks again for watching everyone, you are all truly the best, and I will see you guys next time. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching, I genuinely appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy the Carnivores games and Carnivores content on YouTube, and want to help support this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash sorryandtarget. There's a link down below in the description of this video. As many of you guys know, this YouTube channel is not my job, and it takes a lot of my time to work on videos. But I love doing it for you guys, and every little bit donated helps me dedicate more time to making you guys the best Carnivores content on YouTube. Thank you all for everything you do. I love you all, you are all the best. And I will see you guys next time.